Hi everybody, this is Jim Kemp with 705 CNC. Hey, I recently started a project where I'm using these small uh, LCDs, 1.28 inches, and they're just cute as heck. They're uh, 240 by 240 pixels, and there's a lot of support out there for them. Uh, there's a, a, needs to connect to an Arduino, or even a Raspberry Pi, but the Arduino, uh, while the Adreno itself is a little slow, the ESP32 seems to drive it really well. So with their driver and uh, some videos out there, which I'll link in the description below, there's uh, the first video is a guy that goes through setting up the hardware and getting the display just working. And then there's a much longer video, another guy that goes through setting up the Arduino environment and getting all that working. And then, you know, how to actually uh, drive the display uh, you know there's some tricky parts uh, trying to get a moving uh, graphic to slide over the top of another one uh, yeah that that's a bit complicated and actually generating the artwork I'll have a separate video where I go through how I did it and I'll release all my source code so you could just drop this into an ESP32 through the Arduino environment and should have you up and running so I'm making a vacuum gauge. Uh, I actually need a vacuum gauge. I've got an application. I've got a, a VF5, a Haas VF5, and I've got a vacuum chuck in there. And I'm trying to control a vacuum pump to maintain the vacuum. And right now you have to kind of stand there and monitor the thing to make sure that you maintain vacuum. If you generate a small leak, you know, when the machine's moving around, the hoses are getting flexed and tiny little uh, leaks develop so you have to keep cycling the vacuum pump on you know every four or five minutes you'd have to turn the pump back on and, and draw the vacuum back down so this gauge is going to monitor the vacuum for me using a sensor and automatically turn the pump on and off for me and so it's just going to have a relay output there'll be a second there's actually two relays on the little board the second relay I'll wire into an alarm so we can have an audible alert that you know the vacuum pump is is got a leak so bad that it can't keep up and potentially even wire that into the vf5 so that it would stop cutting if the vacuum isn't you know drawn down to a certain level so you know you can get these displays on on amazon for 20 bucks turns out if you do a little digging and searching and willing to uh wait a couple of weeks and get them directly from china i think these things are down to like under 10 bucks a piece for these displays. So, you know, you get an ESP32 for 10 bucks and you get a display for 10 bucks. You know, that's if you were gonna make a bunch of these, but you know, for me, I'm, I'm using a, a ESP module. It's probably, I don't know, 15 bucks and the display is 20 bucks. So, uh, you know, this, <laughs> the actual vacuum sensor is way more than all that combined. So, so that's fine. So this video, it's kind of a long video. It's all about making an aluminum uh, housing for the display. So, you know, I started with uh, just making a 3D printed thing. So this is just a, a ring that's got a notch. You know, there's a, there's a big notch in the bottom of the display. So there's a notch and, and this thing just bolts together. And this didn't really work out so good. I mean, it was okay, but you had to glue the display in and then screw it down. So a much better version is, uh, uh, this one that uh, uh, dog don't you dog go, go lay down don't you knock my camera don't you do that again so anyway uh, 3d printed version uh, but I you know catted this up with the intent of actually machining it out so tried to make this as easy to machine as possible turns out it's still not so easy to, to machine as you'll see in the video but so the display bolts into this thing so let's see if i can show that here this guy just keys through here sets down in there so that pops in there like that and then on the back there's a couple of uh, ears that screw down to uh, there's little brass inserts that they've they've attached to the back of the circuit board so this is designed to to have those bolt down like that 
and then have a ring that bezel that bolts on top of that and then that allows you to mount it in a panel or whatever you want to do so for me I'm, I'm going to use this little little housing I made so uh, this thing just slides in but then it lets me have a knob at the bottom and then it's got some magnets on it that lets you snap it down to the top of the control panel on the Haas so uh, done a couple of cool things I think uh, I don't know if you can see this but it's got what's called a, a gauge bug you can see it rotating around the outside of the display you know what I'll uh, switch to a better camera GoPro just won't focus close up I'll uh, I'll record a video of this close up so you can actually see the stuff working better but anyway the next hour is all about machining this aluminum case and hope you enjoy it thanks a lot so this is a little uh, more close up and you can see the uh, gauge bugs that I programmed to move around the outside. So uh, basically when the vacuum gets uh, above this one, it'll shut the vacuum off. And then when the vacuum goes below the red one, uh, the vacuum pump will turn back on. And then it's got a little blinking LED in there that just shows you, uh, you know, if it's below or I think it's below the yeah into the red it flashes red and anytime it's green then you're good to go so uh yeah that's about it so it's got the uh esp32 module down here it's got the encoder knob unfortunately i have to put some pull-up resistors on here because the esp32 doesn't have pull-up resistors programmable so and then this one's just kind of stripped down in terms of wiring ready to go into a housing so yeah it's kind of the hardware up close and personal okay step number one i think is going to be to face this thing off just came out of the saw so We'll throw it up on uh, some one, two, three, or one, two, three, two parallels here and uh, face this baby off. Let's take that uh, let's take that burr off. We don't want that goof enough to probe. If the shaft of the probe would be bad.
400 SFM, uh, four and a half inches a minute, about a thou and a half chip load for two. Except I'm missing one of the teeth. So, a little deeper chip load. Mm -hmm. Bring you and show you. Oh, crap, boy. Nice. Okay, to uh, face that, I got a custom little program I use over and over and over again. So all I have to do is change the values at the top here top bit of it and it just makes small little passes to do a facing operation so I can just set how deep I want it to go you know starting and ending depth uh, depth of cut feed plane safe height X start and end uh, Y coordinate the tool number you know and then you just tell it you know uh, tool diameter feed rates and that kind of crap and then from there it just it just does its thing to face down so uh, not very long code but use that little program over and over again for simple stuff like this okay this is the CAD file and that doesn't look too dissimilar from what we've got 3d printed and that's all going to come out of this aluminum uh, rod this is a two inch square and the main part of this is under two inches so should fit so see if i can uh, take this thing apart hide that we'll hide that uh, hide the knob hide the pot bezel off so this is how the LCD sits in th this first part so there's a little mounting uh, let's see if I can hide that part hide him for a second yeah so the LCD comes with these little mounting bosses here right so that's what the LCD is going to mount to so let me bring the other part back so uh, some of the tricky stuff is we have to machine out this little notch for the LCD. Uh, oh, and then putting these holes on the side. Luckily, we've got a square block to start with, so we can just rotate the block and the vise to uh, machine those in. So that shouldn't be too bad. Uh, these little holes are... Uh, number 256 so those will be uh, a little pucker factor so let me hide the LCD here so hopefully this will be easy to machine you know I put all these these uh, radiuses in so it would make it easier for the cutter to get in there no square corners so same with down here right there's a nice wide radius for the cutter to get in so this thing is about a half an inch thick so not too bad let's measure the outside diameter measure this guy it's it's uh inch and seven eighths in diameter so just under two inches so it should all work out so now it's just a matter of uh, building up some tool paths for this thing and that's the next step Okay, so now we're going to pick up the uh, center of the block and retouch off, basically. So,
This should be fine. Good. The button is going bad for the uh, tool change. This button up here. I press this. This thing uh, tool release. Yeah, I'm gonna have to replace the button. Looks like. Anyway, those tools look like they'll work. So this will let it rip. See what happens. inches a minute or no 400 SFM four and a half inches a minute uh, with a 0.1 inch depth of cut super slow not quite sure but the meets so bloody slow Took forever today. We finally got the outside done. <coughs> so <coughs> now we can start ripping on the inside. So yeah, that could have gone a lot, lot quicker. All right, give this another shot. So we get to go a little faster this time.
600 SFM, 16 inches a minute, uh, one thou chip load for two. This should take 10 15 minutes to hog out the inside of this cavity. needs chamfering but other than that looks pretty good mm, a couple extra tools we got to load up so number 50 for the uh, 256 tap this is the clearance drill and this is the actual uh, tap if I can get that out of there one-handed yeah 56 tap. Hard time focusing. But anyway. Load those in, touch them off, should be good to go.
Okay, this is going to uh, just drill chamfer and drill the holes. So we'll see how that goes. Just taking the edge off. Hmm. Oh, yeah, those corners would be heavy because we left material behind from the eighth inch. Whoops. Should have done some rest milling to clean those out. Whoops. Slide. Do a little air cutting, wasting time. Starting to cut. All right, let it rip. So it looks like that drilling works. Drill survived. Drill the four inside holes. Okay, drilling off done. Pretty sweet. A little deeper on the deal, but short of that, looks pretty freaking nice. All right, this is the worst part. I hate tapping for the first time, but everything looks like it's set up right, so. Let's see what happens. Okay. 
clearly going in 0.2 inches. I'll finish doing it by hand. Uh, this freaks me out the first time. That's it. Done. Well, well with that side. So I'll have to use the cutoff saw and put the holes on the outside, but getting closer. Yeah, I wish I hadn't have taken this thing out. Uh, two things. Well, first, right down in here, uh, the cutter was too big. You know, I used a 3 8 and it left some material down in, in these two corners. So uh, you should have used some rust milling to clean those out. So I think I'm going to put it back in here and try and get those out. Otherwise, the corner of the LCD is going to hit there. We'll see that later. The other thing is, you know, I didn't. A I only asked for uh, 15 thousandths chamfer, but the chamfer just looks huge. Uh, I don't know. Now that I look at it in, in the simulator, it's pretty big too. It looks like what I got. So next time I'll lower that down. It's a little little much on the chamfer. It's almost getting into these screw holes, but. At least I didn't break a bloody tap. So put it back in. We'll try and do the rust milling on these two little corners. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can get it all lined up. So we'll see. All right, let's see if we can pick up the uh, X and Y again here. Let's start with Y. We've got this feature towards the bottom, like it's supposed to be, so it's oriented the right way. So it should go in here and rest middle on these corners, clear that out. It's a little uh, 3 16 flat end though. We'll try that next. That's this, right? Probably could have done a little better with my lead-in, lead-outs. it right there yeah I don't know if you can see that but it looks a lot better can't tell if the camera's focusing or not yeah those corners are cleared out now awesome uh, this is just putting the holes along the side so you have to turn it three times around and yeah First he does a little center drill, and then drills it through. And it finishes the whole finishes the hole with a number two center drill. It just drills down to depth, putting the uh, chamfer on the hole.
and it's actually the third and last one, so it should be all done. Okay, if everything's set up right, correctly, this should just cut this thing off. And then we put it back in the mill and face it up, so let's see if we can get this to happen. Well, I was hoping not to have that floor through there, but oh well, we can still mill it off. Okay, cutting that thing off in the uh, horizontal saw was a mistake, because now i got to try and finish this thing, and I had to come up with this really sketchy setup to do it. Everything wrong, is wrong with this setup. You know, I couldn't put it in the middle of the vise because stuff would fall through the center of the vise, so I had to offset it. The, the V blocks are too tall, so they wanted to pinch in at the bottom, so I had to put, don't tell anybody, some Joe blocks along the bottom. And then parallel sitting on top of those to get the part sitting up level, so it's just catching this thing. And yeah, and then if you crank down on the vise at all, it's just going to crush the part. Uh, is a horrible setup, but you know, for a single part, don't tell anybody. So I think I got lucky. But, uh, stopped it halfway through and pulled this out before it got tangled up. Amazing. But uh, yeah, got lucky this time. Very cool. I think I'm gonna stop here before I push my luck too far. Yeah, that was a mistake taking it out again. Should have left it in there because now I have to uh, cut these down to the right height because I don't have a screw long enough to fit through there. So I've got to go back in my cheesy setup and try and uh, re-indicate this thing back in just so I could cut these things down. But that's the way it goes. Ah, frustrating. So far so good, taking a real light 20,000 step of cut, going half the normal feed rate, 12 inches a minute, so a few more passes, we'll get down to depth. Bit of a pucker factor. Well, this thing didn't turn out too bad. Uh, it's not the best. You know, it's got some some witness marks around the outside here that I'm not too proud of. And yeah, there was some sketchy uh, setups involved. And there's some uh, rust material in here that should have been removed, rust machining, because now this guy won't fit on here because the uh, depending on that rust material being out of the way so that kind of sucks but the LCD seems to fit in here pretty good Let's see if I can get this down in here yeah so that drops down in there like that and then the little screws go in the back I don't know if I can do this easily one just put two in so yeah all bolted in there and then that, the next step would be make uh, this out of aluminum so then this goes over the front makes it look nice I get it lined up Let's see there it goes yeah so yeah next step make this out of aluminum instead of uh, 3d plastic okay here we go again I get the uh, 
stubby end mounted back in there and we're going to get the uh, the bezel ring out of this one now so we get this one lined up She's barely catching me. Lower that down. Try again. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, we're going to start by facing this thing off. A big face mill. Just trying to figure out where this thing should start and stop. Minus 2.7, and we'll run it to about there. One, with Y, maybe there, quarter wrench. All right, I'm going to put all those numbers into my program. Okay, should be good to go. Jesus. No, that's right. Right? Should make two passes here. Taking twenty thousandths off each time. Super slow and easy, I know, but you're only doing one part. More about not making mistakes and getting it done fast. Maybe we don't need two passes. Yeah, that's silky right there. Good to go. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Nice. Love that shell mill. And it's even got a missing tooth. Broke the dumb screw off. I don't know how to get it out easy. I don't want to take the time to EDM it out. So, amazingly, it seems to cut just fine with five teeth instead of six. Who knew? Yeah, I should get another one though. It just doesn't seem kosher. This is a, uh, it says on there somewhere, I thought it was a SARS. Huh, I don't see a name on it. 
basement. Oh, maybe it says right there. Yeah, SARS right there. Yep, I'll get another one, I guess. That sucks. Always forget this part to reset the Z after I face something off. I've gotten burnt with that so many freaking times. Now all I have to do is just come in and touch the Z again. Good to go. You just have to remember to do it. Alright. Trying to make sure it doesn't crash in the material or anything. That looks good. Six hundred SFM, one and a half thou for two. Forty thou depth of cut. Probably could have done the whole thing in one go, but again, if you're making one part, I don't mind taking a little extra time. Good. So far. Okay, for this last set of cuts, we're going to put the chamfer on the outside, put the really big chamfer on the inside, drill the holes, countersink them, and even chamfer the holes. So, a lot of chamfering, some drilling and counter, counter boring. So, but it all should go pretty quick. 12 minutes according to the simulation. It's wrong with that snap down. Oh, that's irritating. There it goes. All right. Did I reset the Z height? I don't think I did. God damn it. Oh. Always forget. Did that it didn't change. No, it's still good. What am I thinking?
Oh Jesus. What is it doing? What's that? Alright, figured out what happened. The center drill and the drill are on the same tool number. So I tried to use the center drill as the drill after it finished center drilling. So that was just stupid. So I think it's fixed. Should be good to go. There's the drill. Should be okay. Hopefully the countersink will erase what the center drill did. But we'll have to wait and see. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Okay, here comes the countersink. See how that works out. Oh, it's doing the hole first. She's barely touching it. Jesus. Oh, it's spiraling down in. That's what's going on. Instead of doing a lead in, lead out, there wasn't any room. So I had to do a spiral. So it's plunging in Z while it's spiraling down. So 
spiraling down in Z to get to the right depth. And hopefully it works out. Now it's trying to do or starting to do the outside contour. Fifteen thousand, so I went up the fifteen thousand chamfer, I should say. Didn't crash on that thing in the center. Doesn't look like it is. That's doing a nice, healthy 30 thou chamfer. The 40 if you remember. The next one's going to do 60 in the same spot. I was afraid of taking it all in one go, so I broke it up into a couple of passes. Yeah, so there's a the second pass. 40, I think. Stop after this one. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, let's pause it here. Instead of it doing another one, we will. Stop the spindle and jog the y axis. Jog away. Have a look, see if you want to continue. another one <clears throat> now we'll do the jog back Crush fingers. Come on, baby. I guess that's not so bad. That's making me nervous. Yeah, I want to do another one. 
don't know. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. <coughs> I think we go with that. Yeah, that's going to be fine. That's deep enough. And if I made the chamfer any deeper, <laughs> if I made the chamfer any deeper, then these little gaps around the screw might look goofy. So, I think we're going to go with that. So now, we're going to try and work our nerve up to use this bad boy to free him. That's what I should have used on the other part too. Was going around there with this guy. Oh, I actually go this way, but yeah, this thing always always makes me crazy. But got to be done. Man, I hate using this saw, but when it works, it works great. It's just scary. It's super scary. nice when it works that turned out awesome even the back side looks pretty good all those little countersink holes I can't wait to see what that looks like bolted on there awesome so that turned out pretty awesome I think it looks pretty slick Damn thing won't focus. I don't know why. But pretty happy with it overall. So still got some more to do. Put in the uh, rest of the housing. But uh, you get the little, little bugs working down here so they can zip around. But that is looking pretty slick. Can't believe it took a whole flipping day. But it is what it is. It's way better than this crappy 3D printed plastic. Doesn't look too bad. So this is where she's going to sit ultimately. A little gauge doing her thing. And it's going to control this vacuum pump down here. So this vacuum pump's going to get cycled on and off to keep the vacuum in the tank for our big, huge vacuum fixture inside the machine. So, pretty cool.